From Minnesota's congressional seats to the governor's office, very little changed on election day, with one big exception. Governor Mark Dayton did win re-election last night, but his DFL party does not have total control at the Capitol any longer. Voters decided to give the Minnesota House of Representatives back to Republicans. Pat Kessler joins us now with what this change in the balance of power means, Pat. Yeah, really interesting. Governor Dayton's re-election did buck the trend of Republican victories around the country, but voters here put Republicans back in charge of the state house. But despite their sometimes fiery campaign rhetoric, the new GOP leaders are taking a conciliatory tone. Minnesota voters gave the governor a solid re-election victory. But unlike the last two years of Democratic dominance, Dayton's fresh reality is a new Republican majority in the Minnesota House. I'm proud to say that Democrats' total control of state government in Minnesota is over. Exuberant Republicans take back the House they lost just two years ago. That's when they battled Governor Dayton to a budget standoff and a 17-day state government shutdown the longest in U.S. history. Dayton says it's up to them to prove they won't do it again. We'll have to see if they're willing to take a more responsible tact. I hope they will. And I'm certainly willing to do my part, but it takes, uh, it takes two to tango and, you know, can't dance alone. In fact, Republicans say they have no immediate plans to press the issues they campaigned against, demanding changes at Minsure, repealing high income tax hikes, or stopping the controversial Senate office bill. We, we, we really are, are dedicated to uh, coming here to St. Paul. We want to roll up our sleeves and get to work for Minnesotans on the problems that they care about. If Democrats uh, are on the same page, we're going to get along just fine. And despite his fractious history with Republicans, Governor Governor Dayton says he's also prepared to compromise. When you run for office, you deal with the rhetoric. When you serve in office, you deal with the reality. Republicans say they took back the House majority because Minnesota Democrats were metrocentric and did not pay enough attention to rural Minnesota. And Governor Dayton says he survived the Republican tidal wave because the state's economy is doing so well. Kind of interesting over the next couple of months, I think. For sure. You know, Pat, the governor said this will be his last term. Is that going to have any bearing on how he approaches the next four years? You know, it really will, I think. A couple of things about that. He's on an island here in Minnesota, Republican governors in states all around Minnesota, and he's the only Democrat. He told us today also we're going to see Dayton unbound in the next four years. Whatever that is, yeah. but I'm looking forward to <laughs> we it. We are, too. Yeah, we'll look forward to it. All right. Thanks, Pat. You bet. The last time U.S. Senator Al Franken was on the ballot, he only won by 312 votes. But last night, he defeated Mike McFadden by more than 200,000 votes. Today, the Democratic senator said that some Minnesotans didn't know quite what to think of him when he was first elected, but he said that has changed. I got stuff done, and I got stuff done by crossing party lines and finding common ground. And but I also would stand my ground when uh, powerful uh, interests came, uh, you know, tried to do stuff that, that would not help the middle class and those aspiring to be the middle class. Senator Franken returns to a now Republican controlled Congress. He said that he'll look for common ground and work across party lines. One of Minnesota's most closely watched races also had one of the closest final results. We didn't know until this morning that Representative Rick Nolan had defeated Stuart Mills. The incumbent Democrat won Minnesota's 8th District by about 1% or fewer than 3,700 votes. Still a sweet victory. It's a wonderful victory. And thanks to all of you for making it possible. <laughs> Representative Nolan said that Mills called to congratulate him this morning. In a written statement, Mills thanked Nolan for a hard-fought race. He said... While we ultimately weren't successful, I think this race brought up a lot of issues that matter to the voters. It is my sincere hope that Congressman Nolan works over the next two years to address those real concerns and that he works to represent every voice in the 8th District. If your polling place seemed a little less crowded yesterday, it likely was. Uh, the state estimates only about 50% of eligible voters cast ballots in this midterm election. That compares to nearly 56% in 2010 and 60% in, in 2006. The Secretary of State's office says this year's numbers could go up a little bit higher after the counties submit their final vote numbers. You can take a closer look at all the election results in your community by visiting WCCO.com links.